Hello everyone and welcome back to Just Finish Coding. This is part 2 of our 3D Maze series which we're making on Scratch 3. So without further ado, let's get right into it. Just finished coding. Now I have to interject here that if you've not watched part 1 of this series, please watch it before you come here because as you can see I'm picking up from where I left off and for this video to make sense you need to watch the previous one. I will leave a card for you right here. Please watch the video and then come right back. If you're still here I'm gonna assume that you've watched part 1, in which case in this video you will have an understanding of how the dot sprite works although you still won't have any visible 3D maze output. So let's get right into it. You have to upload a sprite now and that sprite, assuming that you've downloaded all of the game assets, is called the dot. So it's very simple, it's just one pixel and it's extremely hard to locate. Um, and when the green flag is clicked, what I will do is set the transparency to 100. And um, the reason I'm doing this is actually I'm going to do it for all the three sprites, which means the player and the maze are going to be completely transparent. Um, but I just think it's fine if the maze stays as of now because we will be having an entire 3D thing coming up and I will hide them that time. So set the ghost effect to 100. And if you remember from the previous video, we broadcasted this message at the end of um, each forever tick. So we broadcast it fine distance and now we can head over to the dot and we can say when I receive fine distance and this is where we need to um, initialize a bunch of variables and uh, I'm going to do it within the set variables of my maze uh, of my player sprite. So now we can head over to variables and do um, what I'm doing. So the first variable is called max site. Um, the second variable is called field of view. And these two variables, you can um, do them all in caps because they're going to be constants. And I will set just the two of them here. So set max site and set field of view. Max site, I'll set to 170. And just copy me here. You don't have to think about what I'm trying to do. Um, and field of view, I'll set to 50. So now let's go to the dot. And here I will be making some variables once again. So I will make a variable called distance. And you can click OK. And all of these, by the way, are for all sprites. You don't have to set it for the sprite only um, uh, because it just makes things easier if we do it like this. So distance, next we will be setting angle. And um, finally, we will be making a list. And this list is going to be called distances. And it will have always a length of, um, a length of field of view. Now, you don't have to understand that right now. Just follow me along. So when we receive fine distance, each and every time, I will delete all of distances. And what I will do here is I will set angle to, and now we can head over to the operators and grab a, a, a minus and say zero minus, and then a divided by saying field of view divided by two. So what this is gonna result in is if our field of view is 50, it's gonna start off with negative 25. And I'm doing this uh, because I want to change the angle by positive one each time. So you can just change um, this to be field of view by two and change angle by negative one, which I'll do as positive one later on. But that will result in a problem when you are drawing the walls and you have to start from the right, which does get pretty complicated. So I will not recommend it. So you can set it to be this. And our field of view, you can think about it as a maximum range of sight. So if I were to assume that this red dot here is our player, our field of view would be the angle between these two imaginary lines which I'm drawing here. So since that's 50, it means that there are 25 to, this, um, to the right of you know, the center normal and 25 to the left of the center normal. I'm going to assume that the um, extreme left is going to be 25 minus of, assuming the normal is 0, and the right side is 25 plus. Um, which is um, on the right of the normal. So anyway, you can set angle to be um, zero minus field of view by two, and uh, you can set distance to be zero as well. So set distance to zero. And what you can do is now grab a repeat number of times from the control uh, section, 
and put distance 0 within that. And we will be repeating field a few times. And after we set distance to, uh, uh, to 0, what we will do is go to the player each and every time. Because remember the point of the distances list is to get, um, get the values of where the walls of the maze are with respect to the player. And if the walls are farther, that particular item in distances is going to be you know, of a greater magnitude. So we will go to not maze, but we will go to player each and every time and we will point in direction. And this is where things get a bit tricky. So you can grab a plus from the operators and you can say point in direction plus angle. And the first one, uh, you can head over to sensing and you can grab this block which says backdrop of stage and change the stage to be player. Now you can get um, access to the local variables of the player or the private variables, um, whatever you want to call them. And now you can say point in direction, direction of player plus angle. And after we do this, we can enter into a repeat until loop and we will repeat until either, so repeat until either, uh, so you can grab an OR from the operators category and you can see touching maze as your first one. And this is where you have to understand what the max site is. And max site is just a human phenomenon basically. So we can, our eyes can see up till a certain point, but beyond that, we can still see, but we can't perceive the distance the same way. And as a result, we can't make out if an object is, um, you know, like, uh, for example, let's just say a kilometer away and 900 meters away. So it really, you know, kind of messes up with our senses that way. And that's what um, the max site really is. Uh, you will start to see its use when we get into the raycaster, which will probably be in the next video. Um, but we will use that variable right here. So we can say greater than, and we will repeat until either it's touching the maze, or we'll repeat until distance has become greater than max site, which isn't really gonna happen given, you know, field of view, but we could um, be extremely close to the maze and then touch it. So that is a possibility. All right, so either of these two things need to be the case. And each of these times we will move by one step so we're moving a teeny tiny bit forward. Um, and I also want to keep track of the steps I moved. And that's why I have the distance variable. So I will change distance by one. And after all of this entire thing happens, I will add distance to distances. And this obviously has a fallacy because since I'm not changing the angle, it's going to remain constant. And thus I get only one distance. So what we can do is say change angle by one and this is gonna make sure that our list works properly. So to illustrate my point, what I will do is I will add an extension and this is gonna be the pen extension. So this is the extension that we need. And um, here I will say erase all and I will just keep that block on the side and I will say pen down here. So our pen color is set to default by um, whatever color this is and each and every time we are going to record our movement. So if you run your code now, you can see that our program runs like this. Now obviously the reason, um, you know, this entire long line came was because uh, the dot started there. And the reason you have this, these particular lines moving beyond the maze is because of my computer pretty much getting overloaded. But if you have a reasonably fast computer and not too many programs running in the background, you will see that all of them stop right at the maze. All right, so I just lost my connection there and I think I'm back. So to finish this thing off, we need all of this to happen at an extremely fast pace um, because we need to make sure that the player isn't really waiting for the 3D maze to appear and it happens basically instantly. So to do that, let me first, you know, erase all of the pen marks which are still on the screen. And since my pen is down right now, I can add in a pen up and just hit that block once and I could just remove all of this, um, you know, pens, um, this pen extension uh, blocks completely. Now what you can do is head over to my blocks and you can make a block called find distances. And this one does pretty much exactly what we needed to do, which is all this code which we coded right when we receive that message. And if you hit the run without screen refresh, this thing's going to happen incredibly fast. And as a result, everything would get over pretty much instantly. So now you can call this block of code here 
and that will be pretty much it. I'll end this video here. In the next video, we'll probably get into coding the um, brighter aspects of the maze, if you want to think about it that way, which include the recaster so that we can see actual 3D walls popping up. If you've enjoyed this video, please make sure you leave a like and also don't forget to subscribe and turn on the notification bell. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.